Hello. I am here today with a very inspiring woman that I have been following for quite a while, who is a Jewish lifestyle digital content creator here from Canada for a year in Israel. And we're going to hear more about her. But hello, Anna Yishai, hello. also known as Chala Mom. Yay. Thank you. Hi. How are you? I'm doing really well. It's um, such a nice day outside. Oh, Hashem. And how are you doing? I feel great. Every day I'm here in Israel, it's a miracle, and I don't take it for granted one day. Um, I was speaking to friends back home, and although the weather is turning and it's kind of mild in Toronto, usually I have this like dip in my mental state of mind, you know, when there's less sun, daylight savings, and I haven't had it here. Really? So I'm just like, kind of waiting for it to happen but hopefully it won't I'm just enjoying the good weather yeah yeah, yeah. I also kind of get the same thing it's called sad and and I do get sad yeah yeah I know <laughs> yeah I know and and especially now just because it's like just transitioning into winter um okay but this is not winter let's just right. call a spade a spade oh really I guess compared to Canada yeah, yeah. like sometimes we get snow during Sukkot <laughs> yeah yeah Right. Just just wait. Your year in Israel adventures is still unfolding. I know. I still haven't <laughs> been to Jerusalem in the winter, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I actually found out about you through a friend who just sent me a video of you, like, rocking it out in the kitchen with a challah. Um, and she was like, Hannah, this reminds me of you. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I love dancing around in the kitchen, making challah, like, all the time randomly. But then, like, I saw that you were doing this and you were – living this and you're living so much more of it um, online of, of Jewish lifestyle of like combining your love for what you love for dance and 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 Judaism and I wanted to know like how how did you get into this right so the story of Halamam really unfolded around the beginning of COVID I was on social before like a spectator slash stalker on some accounts <laughs> <laughs> And, like I am to you now. <laughs> and it's totally fine. And we grow, we learn from each other, right? And yeah. we draw inspiration from each other. But what happened was, do you remember there was this rage of sourdough? Everyone was making sourdough because yes. there was no yeast in the world. I don't know. Yeah. And I tried and I failed and I tried and I failed. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to make the thing that I know I can do. Like if I'm not good at anything here, you know, you've, after you fail for something for so long, you're like, <laughs> I'm not good at it. And I was like, you know what? Um, I'm just going to make the thing that comforts me, that connects me to being Jewish, that connects me to Shabbat, and I'm going to make challah. And that's how it started. And I decided, you know, I'm going to show people an alternative that, you know, if you can grab a hold of some yeast, you can make a delicious bread during this bread phase and craze that we were in during COVID. And then it kind of grew from there that people were so interested in the process of hands in dough, making something out of nothing mm. like putting a whole bunch of ingredients together and something at the end of it came out that was beautiful not only something concrete but also something especially for us jewish women and jewish people we know that challah elevates shabbat it's part of you know our symbol it's our it you know it's, it's yeah. the smell it's the taste it's the it's the braid it's the whole experience which reminds us of Shabbat. And I think during COVID, many of us felt like, well, Sunday feels like Tuesday and Tuesday feels like Thursday and Thursday feels like Wednesday. And um, that was true for us too. It was very difficult to manage and navigate COVID with four young children at home, but Shabbat had to be different. And that saved me in many ways, um, even from a mental health point of view, I had something to look forward to. It was something that was gonna be different. Everything would be different on that day, including challah. So it grew from there. Once um, I got some traction and people were, there were some videos that went viral. Um, and then I noticed, you know what, I have more to say than just making bread. I mean, I don't make bread every day. Um, and certainly I wouldn't, I eat bread every day, but you know, <laughs> you just can't keep making challah every single day. Yeah. Then I started um, to talk about what does Judaism look like through my Jewish eyes, through my lens? Um, and I was very open on my platform, continue to be open, that I was raised in a home. Uh, first of all, I was born in Israel. I was raised by Russian Israeli parents. Wow. My parents, Jewish parents, 
were born in Moldova, in a time where being Jewish was difficult. Um, and my mother came to Israel at the age of 14, right after the Yom Kippur War. And she served in the army, she got married here to my father, she had my brother and I, and they moved together to, uh, to Canada. My father came a little bit later after he served in the Russian army, and then he served in the Israeli army, met my mother, got married, had, had my brother and I, and they came together to Canada um, for, for a different reason. But at the end of the day, I always had a very strong Jewish identity. I always had very strong roots, but we didn't really have a lot of tradition or education, Jewish education. I didn't go to Hebrew day school, um, but I knew I was Jewish and I was proud to be Jewish. So here I am later in my life, I become observant. I'm like a turtle. I grow very, very slowly. But the good news is that turtle always wins the race, right? So slow I'm and steady. That, right. So I just move slow and steady in my life and I grow a little bit each time, but I really try to honor who I am and who I was and who I continue to be, which is a person that I'm not ashamed of my past. I never thought of myself to be a bad Jew. I don't believe in this concept of good Jew or bad Jew. I just was a, an affiliated Jew or a less educated Jew or maybe a less connected Jew, but a Jew nonetheless. So like traditional? Not even traditional, just a very high level of self identification as a mm -hmm. Jew. Because we're an ethno religion, there's so many different touch points when it comes to being Jewish. And yeah. even if you're not living a Jewish life, um, there are many Jewish people like that around the world. What I try to do on my platform is show a, a broader narrative of what it means to live a Jewish life. And more importantly, a joyful Jewish life. I think so much of the representation that we see of observant Jewish people which are supposed to be the most connected of the Jewish people, it sometimes feels drab, mundane, mm -hmm. dark, um, not accessible, uh, private. And I didn't want to be that person. I wanted to be the person that allowed you, I, I, I opened the door to my home and allowed you to peek in and to see how it could be. It's not that I live this perfect life. I have struggles just like everyone else with mm -hmm. body image issues or with raising children or being in a marriage or self-identity and who am I? What's this life all about? Yeah. But I do it always through a Jewish lens because yeah. I always go back to our sources. So the platform of Chalamam became a place of not only do I joyfully dance with the thing that I made, which is the Jewish food that we all love called challah. But it's a place that I talk about our Jewish holidays, a place where I talk about being an empowered Jewish woman. It's a place that I show my hair wrapping journey or my yeah. hair covering mm -hmm. journey. Very open about that as well, that I only started wrapping my hair 10 years after I got married. And even that process was very, very slow. So the platform is niche in the sense that I'm a digital Jewish content creator, but I don't just talk about one thing because you know what? Women are very eclectic and we're multifaceted. We are. And Jewish women are forced to be reckoned with. And so here I am. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful for the platform. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you were saying that um, you, you move very slow, like a turtle. And you're saying how, like, in your, in your past, you were really into, like, the partying and dancing and now like you, now I see you doing that in the kitchen and like for me even though I come from Israel and in Israel people are very eclectic and you have so many different colors of the rainbow with your within religion like how did you it, it does seem pretty far from each other like here you see like a Jewish observant woman still holding to what she loves and to that dance and that self-expression but they do seem kind of like two worlds apart. How did you move like in such a slow pace to like bringing those two worlds together? Yeah, I think in moving very slowly in my own journey of self-discovery and inwardness growth is that I really know who I am. I really know what I'm about. Um, and someone else's opinion or perspective of me doesn't, doesn't shake my core. I think that's the journey that we all have to go on. Mm -hmm, there have sure. been times when people have been critical of me and it continues to happen on social media, even from within our tribe. But I know that it's just coming from a place 
that is not looking at me with with a loving eye, with a loving perspective. As a Jewish person and as I continue to, to grow and understand what our traditions are and how we are supposed to see each other, it's from a place of Ahavat Yisrael. Mm -hmm. that we're all different, we're all eclectic, we all were positioned here on earth for different tasks and different reasons and we all have what to learn from each other. Who am I to judge for someone who has grown up in a more insular life or for me that has grown up being part of a more secular outward world and chose to right. become more connected and more observant. So what I aim to do is be me, first of all. And being me means I move my body to the music. If the music is there for me, it's a form of self-expression. What you guys see and even how I move on social media is like 10% of how sassy I can really get on the dance floor anyway. We want more now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of worse. I reserve that for only women's eyes or, you know, if I'm dancing around my home or with my husband. But um, listen, I know that there are all types of people on social media. I, my account is not closed. I know that there could be men watching and there are men watching. It doesn't... Uh, bother me. I've certainly had open discussions with my husband about it and um, he's aware and he's also not bothered by it. But don't forget, I wasn't raised in an observant home. I come from a world in which I used to be on that stage dancing in front of hundreds if not thousands of people when I was wow. young. And dancing. I used to dance uh, ballet very seriously when really? I was a child. Yeah. Uh, okay, now mm -hmm. it's starting to make right. sense. Right. Vaganova, yeah. Russian ballet, doing wow. the whole Swan Lake, Waltz of the Flowers. Don Quixote, you know, like all the traditional yeah. Bolshoi ballet Serious. pieces. And um, so I know what it's like to wear like a little tutu and, you know, to be, to show my, to leave it all on the dance floor, so to speak. So I'm not bothered by it. And I also believe that um, you can keep scrolling. If it's not for you, if it's not for your eyes, if it's not where you should be, you, um, there's a component here of, um, of guarding your own eyes and having some some sense of accountability for yourself. So I'm accountable to me, I'm accountable to my husband, I'm accountable to my children, I'm accountable to my creator. I know who I am, so yeah, yeah I'll meet you on the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm coming. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Um, you know, in, uh, in, in the Muslim world, they have parties for only women strictly women i was in um i was in turkey once in um the ramada hotel i believe and downstairs next to the masseuse they had a whole hall of these muslim women dressed up in the most colorful like silks and sparkles and everything and i was like what's going on here and apparently it's a thing they go down and into these halls and they just dance and they go wild Nice. And and yeah, and like I also come from a similar world where I, I had my years of like exploring and traveling and, and dancing and we're, we're talking about this before, but I still feel that it would be cool for women who even lived their whole life religious to discover that side of themselves. Sure. Um, yeah, I think it would be a great startup to, yeah. you know, to start creating those events for religious women in Israel. Yeah, I think... Um, you know, music, dancing, singing, playing instruments, it's, it's, a, it's a form of the soul's self-expression. And we were talking about this before that, um, you know, some people think like, oh, the, the clubs are so, you know, so gross, everyone's sweaty and everyone's, you know, in each other's, you know. And okay, I can see that perspective. And maybe now that, you know, I'm a mother and I'm a little bit older, I'd be like, mm, yeah, maybe that was a bit raunchy. Mm -hmm. But for me, and at least with my boundaries when I entered that club, um, and we, we talked about this where my husband would come with me and he would be my bodyguard. <laughs> and he, so nobody touched me, nobody was allowed to come close to me. Yeah. He's not a dancer, he would hold my, my drink. And, um, and I dance and I just felt free. We all, we all need that place where we feel free. And some of us climb mountains 
and and go to Kilimanjaro and some of us mm -hmm. you know have to do marathons and Ironmans and some of us need to dance and make challah and dance with our challah. <laughs> So I'm not climbing yeah. any mountain soon, and I don't know <laughs> if I'll ever do an Ironman, but this is where I live. This is my form of self-expression. Yeah, and, and I mean, you're starting, right? You're starting slowly in the Jerusalem Marathon this, <laughs> yeah. this season, right? I'm going to attempt it. I mean, as I said before, I'm not a runner, but I will, I definitely, I want to be part of it. Part of being in Israel for me, too, is taking advantage of everything Israel has to offer. Israel mm -hmm. is not just... Um, a place where three religions meet and it's not just where heaven and earth meet and specifically even Jerusalem it's not just about ruins and a, and a history of many different civilizations you know building on top of each other to this place that we have today as our modern day Jerusalem but for me it's also about the people it's also about how we cultivate our Jewish life in this holy place and I just want to be part of the people I just yeah. want to be part of experiencing the, the aura and the, the spirituality of Jerusalem in many different ways, not just on Shabbat, not just on Ben Yehuda, but like, why not in a Jerusalem marathon? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely one way yeah. to get to know it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now you have a special outfit to wear to it. To this I am so excited. So I just tried on your amazing fit. It's like the lightest weight Hanabana fit that you've ever tried on. I've, I've worn a lot of different workout clothes throughout uh, my years. And I think it's sometimes a little bit more challenging, especially since I dress more modestly right now, to just try to find something that is comfortable yeah. um, and colorful and also feminine that has the right cut. Yeah. Um, and I just tried it on and I'm so excited. It just makes cool. me feel beautiful and it. It doesn't feel so heavy. It just makes me, allows me to move my body properly, and I'm so excited to wear it to the marathon. Oh, amazing! I'm so happy. Yeah. Well, the reason, first of all, it's called Leia Set. Uh, it's named after my sister, who I love, um, and it's really, it's a little bit longer because she like likes covering her knees all the way. Yeah. So, so that was really important for me, like within the brand, to offer like links for all different styles of women, different like preferences. But the reason it's colorful um, is really, I, I love color, like it's my thing. Um, and I was uh, diving in the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. So like that's where I got the idea of the coloring of like, you should still celebrate even within the, within modesty, within the limitations of modesty. Um, but I guess like when you, when you find your own freedom within what you do. That's your true freedom. It's like your freedom on the dance floor. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so when I when I started the brand, first it was geared towards like religious Orthodox women. And then slowly I realized that it was also for Muslim women and Christian women and so many other sects. And I was wondering also like about you, like now that you're doing these videos and this content creation, like do you feel like the initial audience kind of like took like a different direction than what you anticipated or you expected? You know, that's so funny you asked that question because most of, I, I would, you know, I can't even quantify to say most of my audience is a Jewish audience mm -hmm. um, because I get so much feedback from the Muslim and the Christian world really? of um, women constantly telling me like, I'm a practicing, you know, fill in the blank, but I'm so connected to what you're sharing. I think um, when it comes to truth, when it comes to someone showing you their way of life unapologetically, not loud, joyfully, honestly, and non-threatening, it just, it just does connect. Um, I believe women are to be celebrated. I believe women are powerful. I believe women are the pillars of their home. I believe women are the source of life. Um, and however you choose to connect to your creator, um, women should be celebrated in those circles. So to, to stand proudly in who I am, and then that also inspires my fellow Jewish sister to do the same, or my Muslim sister, or my Christian sister, um, 
I think that's a beautiful thing. At the end of the day, you know, we we all kind of, you know, quote the miscongeniality, like, I just want world peace. <laughs> but, you know, we just do. Yeah. We just do. People are people. We just, we all want, you know, good relationships. We want healthy children. We want it. We want to be healthy. We want to live, you know, respectfully and, and um, nicely with our neighbors. We want fresh water. We want good food. We want to celebrate life. Um, and I feel like there's so much access to that, especially I've seen through living and connecting to our Jewish tradition. Yeah. Um, so many of us in the Jewish world are not connected. And as I said before, we have very strong self-identification as Jews. But just because I choose to express my Judaism this way doesn't mean that she or my fellow Jewish sister has to do the same. There are many different, you know, uh, positions in the army, so to speak, you know, and um, this is my way of self-expression. There are other ways of self-expression. For me, the most important thing, whether it's for a Jewish woman or a non-Jewish woman, is that we feel connected with a place of, of love and a place of peace. And if I feel comfortable in my skin, being dressing more modestly, but showing my curves, wrapping my hair and you see my face um, and you're curious about what's underneath and all of a sudden I come across as this, you know, goddess to, you know, goddess image towards you and, and that personifies a beautiful Jewish woman. I, I think that's amazing. Um, I never want to be the person that makes a Jew turn away from Judaism. So... I think it's important as Jewish women are empowered, even by way of your brand, you're, you're giving access to not just Jewish observant women, but women from all different faiths, women that maybe just want to cover a little bit more, want to feel more comfortable in their skin, focus more on the action or the, the actual fit of what they're doing rather than their, you know, what, what they're trying to cover up or get rid of, right? They're trying to focus on the run or the tread or the bike or yeah. whatever it is they're doing. And you give them this, this place where it's just not another thing that they have to think about, which is how do I feel in this tight garment or how, yeah. how is this showing up? And I think when you're coming at this world from a place of, I just want to fix this problem, you know, it's part of who we are as Jewish people. It's the Tikkun Olam mission, but it's also broader because you, you raise the whole Jewish world in doing that because we become part of our broader mission, which is to become a light onto the nations. And I think it's beautiful that you serve not only the Jewish community, but many communities. Yeah. It's interesting how when you come out with a message that isn't like preachy or like screaming out loud, suddenly you find so much connection with the people around you from different sects and different religions. Yeah. I think we live in this world of social media or in the digital age where there's a lot of um, filtering and there's a lot of um, fake imagery and something that so we're trying. Yeah, yeah, and and it's hard because I certainly have felt like, oh, I can't achieve that, you know? I can't, yeah, even early on in my years of early motherhood, like I could never have the bounce back body. Just, I'm, I'm built you know, I, I'm a Russian Israeli daughter of a Russian Israeli woman. I'm curvy. That will always, you know. Yeah. I like bread, clearly. Hella <laughs> mom likes well, it's made to be. gluten. Um, <laughs> so so why 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 punish myself yeah. for that? Why can't I live a life in the way that God created me and yeah. and aspire to just be healthy in this body? Yeah. And I love that you're celebrating it. And and we can and I can see it. I wanted to ask, like, at what stage did you see that, like, what you were doing? What was it that you were doing that suddenly, like, made made your your page go like wildfire? Like, that just made the just yeah yeah. So How did that start? it's so interesting. I I actually don't know, and that's part of the beauty of it because I wasn't focusing on going viral. I was focusing on making great content mm. and creating content that connects and being myself. I always said to myself, and if you're going to post something, make it relatable. If I was going to take a trend, then you were, you were going to see that that trend was related to my mission. It wasn't like I wasn't going to try to conform 
and do something great. to yeah. the trend yeah. just to yeah. see if it could go viral. Yeah. And in fact, I don't know what is going to resonate most with my audience. Yeah. I, I don't know. As a Jewish woman, as a Jewish mother, as a Jewish wife, as a Jewish person, there's a lot of things to talk about. Mm -hmm. I, and I do. I talk about it all because I'm a human being who's multifaceted and multidimensional, and a lot of things matter to me. And living life in a bubble where I'm just focusing on food or Shabbat or my kids and I'm neglecting marriage, friendship, connection, Israel, that is not a balanced approach to living life and it's not the Jewish way. The Jewish way is we struggle through this world and this world throws us a lot of different punches and it was never meant to be easy, but it's meant to be lived with you're meant to live a purpose-driven life. You're meant yeah. to live a meaningful life. And right. each life has a different mission. But you, we're all going to experience difficulties, yeah. challenges. We're all going to have all these relationships that will come and go. We're, we're all going to try to connect to the source of all life. Um, it's a lot of different touch points. I love that about living. I love that about life. And I, and I love that about being a Jewish person. We have this amazing instruction manual so I don't feel so lost of yeah. how to live yeah but I also know that part of being a Jewish person is about going inward and discovering who you are I mean God made you and you have to find out yeah. what did he make right who, what are you about well it's kind of like the past parsha lech lecha. yeah like God tells Abraham go and lech lecha, go find yourself go walk to yourself and although he promises him the land of Israel and, and within that promise, he promises him like stability for his future generations, there's still like a mini commandment to constantly be on the journey of discovery and discovering yourself yeah. and finding your deeper, deeper aspects of I yourself. I feel like when that Parsha came into being, it was like <laughs> Hashem knew that I would read it one day and he was like, I, I, I made that for you. You know, yeah, it's just like yeah, there's certain yeah. parts. Oh my God, and, I, lo I love Lech Lecha. Yeah. I, I'm, every time I read it, I'm like, oh my God, I've been waiting for you. Right. Like, it's like, it's just, it, it, every time I read it also, you realize something else. Right. Yeah. And what is so wrong in life about changing your mind and rediscovering something about yourself and say, I don't want this anymore. I want something else. What is wrong with having an open discussion about, well, why? why did I choose this? Or why do I think this way? I mean, Jewish tradition actually advocates for the why. We are all about asking the questions. We are not the people that shun the question. We're the people that are like, yes, thank you for asking why. Is because Simon Sinek Jewish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, is he? Um, but this idea of, of like, children asking why and then we kind of like shut them down later in life and then we become the adults they're like okay because you said so i'll do yeah. that no i don't yeah. think yeah we weren't yeah. raised for that we weren't bred for that and yeah. that should never stop yeah i think when someone comes back into religion on their own accord which is something that i personally did i grew up religious and then between the 16 and 26 i wasn't then after that i got back into it and when i got back into it i feel like then i was really doing it for my own why for my own reasons. Yeah. And I think that's a gift that many people get when they return to it. It is beautiful to discover yourself and to do it because you want to, not because you feel compelled to or forced to or it's just the way it is. I know many times I took for granted, I would always say like, well, from from birth people, FFBs, they they just like they get it and I have to work so much harder to understand whether it's to be lots or whether it's a pasuk or something, just something more technical. I'd be like, you guys just get it. And my friend who's been religious since the day she was born said, actually, you're totally wrong. Like it could be very technical for us, but we don't connect. It's just sometimes for us, it's just I do and I do and because that's just what we do and you're on yeah. pilot mode, like you yeah. just doing but you're not asking why and I always have to choose to connect because I could so easily not I know what it's like yeah you know yeah and that's why I think it's so great that you found music in a way to connect and I wanted to ask you okay so 
How does it work? So you wake up in the morning like with an idea, and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna shoot some nice scenes here and there, and then like, how do you how do you tie it yeah. together? Okay, Walk so us through a video of Khalamam. Yeah, okay, so here is the good news why I'm so happy to be Khalamam or Matt Ishai and not Kim Kardashian, for example, <laughs> which is I'm not mandated to post. I don't need to post. I know who I am outside of this platform. I have a really amazing family that we created, my husband and I, before all this, and it's still there for me and it's still my number one priority. So that being said, I'm not chasing, um, I'm not chasing uh, a growing audience. I'm chasing connection. I want people to feel what I feel inside the good news is I live a normal life. I don't live in the clouds. I don't live in some sort of gated, you know, community where, where no one can get in. I, I just live my life. I, I am a mom. I'm, I'm a wife. I'm, I'm a person. I'm a woman. And so my life inspires me and it's enough. It really is enough to hear right now. I hear the birds chirping right. in the back and I'm just like, what are they talking about? I'm just <laughs> curious. Like, I always hear like birds talk to God, you know, I'm like, are they, is God telling them something? Is there some, and maybe, and maybe because they're right behind me in the garden, mm -hmm. maybe they, they want to be a part of this podcast. Maybe, maybe they just like, there's something that they want to connect to. I just, I feel more connected to the miracles of everyday life and the natural course of the day because I think like all of us, you know, th these last few years has been so People have been struggling so much with loneliness and you could even not be alone. Like I wasn't alone during COVID. I had four children at home, but I felt alone. Mm -hmm. I felt lonely. Why did I feel lonely? Because in order for me to thrive in this world, I need to connect. I need to connect to nature. I need to connect to my creator. I need to connect to people. I need an outlet. Um, it's my way, it's not everyone's way, but for me it was my way. And so I had to really get comfortable with myself during those years. And, and it's been slow, as I said, but now it's compound effect because I really know who I am. Even though I'm still discovering, I feel really secure in who I am. So when I wake up in the morning, I make my coffee and I'm just in my head. I'm, I'm okay with my thoughts. I'm okay with my uh, dark thoughts. I'm okay with my big ambitious thoughts i'm okay with my sensual thoughts i'm okay with my you know uh, anxiety <laughs> filled thoughts i'm okay with me I, I know that many thoughts will come in and out and i know what i ultimately want to choose to focus on and that's how i express myself in in the content um i will always take you guys on my journey and show you judaism for my jewish eyes and and that's it. It's not forced. It's just, it just happens. Yeah. So as long as I feel creative and I feel good about it, I continue to do it. I like being on your journey. And for me, it's something that sometimes I struggle with because I have this brand and because it's Hanabana, it's a brand. And very often I, I like incorporating my views like on the Parsha, somehow relating it to sport. Sometimes I feel like it's not so related to fashion, and sometimes I feel guilty for that. But at the same time, like, I don't know. I feel like when, when it's a person behind the brand, when it's a person with views and ideas, and it's not just an item, I feel like maybe then you, you kind of see what, it, what the item is about, what the whole story is about. Yeah. You know, you just made me think about Soda Stream. Soda Stream has a very famous line, which is, we don't make soda. That's not what Soda Stream is about. We make peace, one soda at a time. Because Soda Stream, what it was about, was about Arabs and Jews, Palestinians and, and Jews working together. Really? In, in the brand. No yeah, and, and creating that. Now the BDS movement kind of um, messed that up for, for our brothers on, on the other side there. But, <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with having a mission and having that mission come out through the product. If you're not connecting to the users, or then it's just another product. Right. So 
So I love that you're trying to connect who you are to your broader audience. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And I also wanted to ask about your hair, your head covering. Mm -hmm. So Chala and Hadlakat um, Narot and Nida and Tarat and Mishpacha are all mitzvahs of the women, right? Yeah. Um, and I always found it fascinating how the head covering isn't one of them, even though it's right. such a huge sacrifice right. for some women to go and cover their hair. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was just fascinated to hear about how you got to like choosing to cover your hair this way yeah. and how you connect with it. Anything I ever do in my growth in Judaism has to come from a place of empowerment. If I feel it's a sacrifice, if I feel that it's, um, it's not helping me grow or taking away from something, I can't do it. Mm. Um, it's just how I, I am. I need, I need to connect with it. I can't just do it because God told me to do it. I, I, you know, some things, of course, you know, we, we, we live a moral life, thank God. But, um, you know, you use even the word sacrifice. I would say taha to mishpacha is a bigger sacrifice because... Yeah. Um, awesome. but for anyone who knows what, what that's about, I, I think that's the hardest mitzvah for me to keep. And, and it's because I'm in, thank God, a really healthy marriage where I just always want to be connected to my husband. Um, so I would say that that is uh, a bigger deal for me. And I don't talk about it openly just because it's, it's a private thing and it's, it's meant to stay that way and it's meant to be you know something between him and I. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to hair covering, okay, so here it is. I remember, first of all, in Toronto, where I'm from, um, the communities are a lot more, um, there's a lot more pockets in Toronto in terms of Jewish communities. And when we, we're talking in a broader sense of the observant Jewish community, I would say that the Toronto Jewish community leans a little bit more right, mm. a little bit more Haredi or Yeshivish. So the general dress code of women in an ob observant Jewish Toronto is shaitel, is, is wigs, and they're gorgeous. And some of my mentors and people I really respect and friends um, wear shaitels and they're, and they're gorgeous. And I was always enamored by this idea. And thank God they were so open and willing to answer all my, you know, questions that I had about it. And then I remember coming to Israel back in 2016 and I had come, I hadn't come for a really long time, and here I am, a mother, a wife, and I, just walking all around Israel, the north, the south, the east, the west, and I see so many different forms of self-expression when it comes to being a married Jewish woman. It's like a headband. It's um, a ponytail with a hat. It's um, a hair covering um, that is higher up, like a crown in the front. There's, um, you know, tucking all your hair in the back, and it's like a big you know, cushion and, and the hair wrap like what you guys see me wear. There's wigs, there's wigs and a hat. There's all these different forms of self-expression when it comes to being a married Jewish woman. And I thought, ha, huh, I love Jewish women. Take a law and then just like make it your own. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, okay, if laws exist, even like kashrut, right? Kashrut could be bland. Or now we have like fake crab and fake bacon bits. Like, People have found ways to make it, their yeah. fake cheeseburgers yeah. and live kosher yeah. lives. So when it comes to hair covering, that that's what clicked. It was the same thing. It was like, here it is. Yeah. Let's take a law and make it your own. And I remember the first time I covered my hair, it was just for Shabbat. And I covered my hair for about four years just on Shabbat. Really? Just in our community. I was, in, I was part of an amazing community in Toronto, Thornhill Woods Shul non-judgmental, amazing place of growth, amazing community, amazing people. And I would cover my hair just on Shabbat and I felt just an extra level of holiness, extra level of spirituality. I felt extra connected to Shabbat. I felt extra connected to my husband. It was almost like the tentacles of my hair and all this like antenna vibrations and energy that were going out into the world all got like sucked into a vacuum and were and, and it's like the energy within me. I held the power. I held the energy. I directed it or redirected it to the place that it needed to be most, which is my relationship with my husband. And so much of relationship and connection is about energy and where you choose to place it. 
to me, the most important relationship outside from myself, the one I have with myself and my creator is my husband. I've known him since I was 14. And a lot of people are like, oh, that's so cute, high school sweethearts. All yeah, but when you know somebody for a really long time too, it can get drab and mundane and not exciting very easily. Mm -hmm. And I knew that and I had that wisdom in me. And because I am who I am, I am always looking for ways to reignite and reflect, you know, you know, relight the torch and mm -hmm. redirect energy back to us. Um, that's my power as a Jewish woman. And one of the ways I did that was hair covering. And so I did it very slowly, four yeah. years just on Shabbat. Yeah. Then there was that Rosh Hashanah that I said, okay, Shabbat and high holidays, Chagim. Mm. And then I was like, okay, this is working. And then I was like, okay, well, you're just gonna do it for a year, but only the crown of your hair. So you wear a hat with a ponytail, or you'll wear just like, similar to you, a, a bandana mm. or, a, or a headband, yeah. just on like the top. Yeah. yeah. And um, if you look at my like really early TikToks, you'll see it yeah. that I was wearing that style. I saw you were wearing a wig once with a massive challah. Yeah. That, so then I started to incorporate a, a fall. Oh, okay. Right. And then I incorporated um, a wig into the regiment. And then I now wear my or I cover my hair full time. I've been doing it for a year wow. only. Um, but full time, and just like I said before, I'm eclectic and multidimensional, and I need a lot of variety. So I have a lot of different ways that I cover my hair. Yeah. Cover my hair with like a shmata, like a nothing. I still yeah. sometimes when I just go yeah. out, or I wear these big beautiful wraps with the bobo, or I cover with a wig, yeah. or I cover with a fall and headband or a hat. It's just like yeah. whatever floats my boat that day. And yeah. you know what? That's amazing for me. It's amazing that I found a way to honor a piece of our Jewish tradition in a way that I feel comfortable. I feel empowered. I feel like I'm self-expressing. I don't feel pigeonholed. Nobody told me to do this. Nobody forced me to do this. Yeah. Um, and I took it on for me. And I think there's no better way to yeah. compliment the creator and to compliment, you know, higher being, Hashem, however you, you know, want yeah. to identify than to, than to approach him in the most joyful and empowered way that you want it yeah not that it's being forced upon you yeah I I really see that many of the things that you do even like you know incorporating dance into your daily life and also the way you cover your hair and also the way you create it really comes from your own place of your own place of happiness and choosing and um, speaking of which also you chose to come to Israel for a year of adventure yes I did so um, okay so I mean, like, I want to keep my, my questions limited because, uh, you know, we have limited time. But I just wanted to ask, like, first of all, I know you're half Israeli. So do you feel like you're integrating into the Israeli, like, chutzpah and lifestyle? Yeah. And how did it come about? Well, I will correct you. I'm fully 100% oh. Israeli and 100% Canadian. I hold dual citizenship. Okay. Um, I was not raised in a Canadian home. I was raised in a Russian-Israeli home. Right. Um, if you know anything about the Russian culture, and you obviously I, know very I much about... Yes. Здравствуйте. Yeah, just funny. My okay. Хорошо. <laughs> um, so, I was raised by very strong, uh, very uh, tough, very ambitious, mm -hmm. obedient, uh, respectful, uh, driven parents. I also was raised um, with the Israeli mentality, um, which is a little bit of spice, uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, chaval a little bit of dafka, uh, and a little bit of yalla in, in the family. So together, I didn't, and, and of course, I grew up amongst Canadians and Canadian Jewish people who are very polite and respectful and, you know, uh, obedient and, and such, you know, Canadians are great. Yeah, they're, they're not um, to be very friendly. They are right. friendly and, and really amazing, nice people. And so I have a little bit of everything because that's just who I am. Um, coming to Israel was, again, part of the journey of rediscovering. And I say journey a lot because, I mean, gosh, if you wake up in the morning and you take a deep breath, you have another chance at it. And we sometimes take that for granted. I certainly have taken that for granted because sometimes life is so heavy and you just want to stay in bed. And we've all had those moments in life. Definitely. I don't care if you're a teenager 
or you're a new mom, or you're a mom of four kids like me, or your grandmother, everyone, every person has been in that stage where it's just like, it's heavy today and I don't want to get up. And I had enough of those and I just decided, no more, no more. It, it, whatever, I have survived 100% of the days that I've lived. And I will survive 100% of the days that I live. And I need to bank as many great memories. I need to bank as many. I did that. I did something with my life. I can't believe we did that moments. Because when those dark moments come, when those difficult moments come, which they, they may come because we're humans and we will go through these challenges and tests that, we, of course, we wouldn't impose on ourselves. But they may come. I need to know that I have enough good stuff to to bank on. I have enough great memories that I didn't just waste it with anxiety and with an, with what ifs and oh, I'm not good enough and no. I'm I'm not I'm not living about I'm not living that life. That's not what I'm about. And coming to Israel was about, hey, you know what you're Jewish? You were born here. Let's rediscover what that really is. Because if a Jew anywhere in the world is listening to this and it's like, I don't really feel connected, I don't really know what this Jewish thing is about, come to Israel, you will find your groove, you will find your jam here. Any kind of Jew you're interested in being, you will find it in Israel. Um, and I love that about Israel. I, I absolutely am enamored by that. I love seeing the different ways of self-expression, even from the ones that are not fully connected, the ones that refuse it, to the ones that are really into it, even the the uh, exchange of, of ideas and dis you know sometimes not civil discourse but even the discourse, <laughs> really discourse. you know part of that I really love because yeah. Yeah. the Jewish people are a family and family looks like this it's kind of like no you can't have my iPhone charger but I'll give you my kidney <laughs> you know <laughs> that's a relevant compa comparison right yeah, you can right say that. it's yeah. like don't yeah. bother me but yeah. like you need They're blood so you need a yes. kidney yes. like we're here for you yes and I kind of love that yeah I kind of love that yeah. um, so I'm here on the next wave of my journey and making sure that my children and my husband too are are they're part of my journey but they're also on their own giving yeah. them space and freedom to discover who they are what they're about um, yeah, so I'm just, sometimes you have to just put yourself in a space that you know you're going to grow and allow yourself to be open to yeah. what, what can come. And I think that's so much of what being is, being in Israel is about for me. You cannot do what I'm trying to achieve in a, a two-week vacation or a one-month vacation yeah. in the summer. I think being here for a full calendar year is, is a gift. I think it's so courageous of you that you just picked up and you came. And I can imagine with four kids, maybe I can't, but four kids to just come and just yeah. for one year it's huge and in Israel and, yeah. and and something that I feel about Israel anywhere I go in the world I always feel like in Israel I'm really living I always feel like I'm really alive in Israel the air is like more it's more air the fruit is more fruit it's like I feel like I'm like living 150 percent even if it's a mundane day in Israel, it's just real. It's is real. Wow. When I was in Miami last year, I was stuck there for three months in COVID. And there was this guy in Chabad Shul, and he's like, where are you from? I'm like, I'm from Israel. And he like asked me about this like city. And I was like, no, I don't know that city. And then he's like, yeah, so what are you doing here? And I was like, yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> like, like we have one life and I could live my whole life not knowing anything about Israel. And it's just like a gem. And, I don't know, it's something that, that I, even though I've been here since I was three, I, it's still something I really do want to do wanna continue exploring. And thank God, you have everything in Israel. You have desert, forest, oceans, yes, Dead Sea, everything. Um, okay, and I just wanted to ask you one final question. Mm. How do you recommend for women who want to incorporate more dance into their daily life and just don't find time for it? This is not just asking for a friend, of course. <laughs> but like, how, how do you recommend to just go about it? Okay, first of all, I believe in preparation. So what does preparation look like? Make your playlist. You <laughs> have to remember the times where you lit up, where your body uncontrollably just moved to the music, whatever kind of music you love, whether it's classical, whether it's rap, whether it's salsa, whether it's pop. Um, or even rock alternative. Um, you just need to make a playlist. One time, you, uh, first of all, let's 
I know everyone lives a busy life, but we waste a lot of time too. So in your wasted moments of like, I'm just scrolling through Instagram after you finish looking at Halamon videos, <laughs> make your playlist and just have it ready. And then don't forget, we do a lot of um, caretaking at home. We do a lot of um, domestic work in the home. Some of us are very fortunate to have the help, but even so, we all know the women take on way more <laughs> than uh, our partners. And uh, that's when you turn it on. Mm -hmm. That's where you, um, in the moment of doing something mundane, maybe you feel like a shmata. Yeah, <laughs> even when I'm dressed like, there are times where I, even when I know like, okay, I'm scrubbing toilets today, I'll put my hair up and I'll put on a pair of earrings. I'll just put on a pair of earrings and I have my music going. And I mean, it's, no one should ever see this site ever. Maybe my husband or my kids have seen it. But I will be jamming to my music, and that's it. And especially when you're cooking, because cooking is a holy act, and our kitchen tools are divine vessels. And once you start cooking, and you're making something from nothing, and you're also connecting to the essence of who you, who you are, add a layer of musicality to that. I mean, that's just like a party in my dance floor, in my kitchen, all the time. Um, so yeah, that's, it doesn't have to be that you have to go to a club or a restaurant or a lounge or it could be in the privacy of your own home. You should feel free and comfortable in your own home to self-express. I believe growth happens behind closed doors. It happens in darkness. It happens underground. It happens where you are free of judgment, where you are free of criticism, where you can just let your roots spread in whichever way they are meant to spread. And once you start to sprout, once you start to allow yourself to exit your, the doors of your home with a little bit of confidence of knowing who you are, knowing what you're about, feeling good about who you are, then what people see are just the, the, the fruit of, of hard work. You know, that, that's what trees are to me. You know, like I am grateful for the fruit and the shade, but I know they worked really hard underneath to stay mm -hmm. grounded. Yeah. That's me. I just keep working behind the scenes on myself, just like we all should. Yeah. And then just allow yourself to be who you were meant to be. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for, you. for sharing all of this. I feel like I have like a treasure here on my computer now. <laughs> um, and I just want to wish you that you will continue spreading your roots and growing your flowers because you. they're beautiful and Amen. that um, you continue can just continue on your path and by Zradisha and one day I want to make a dancing event with you <laughs> just for the women to get, get, get a taste of it let's do it yeah I'm in <laughs> let's do it and thank you so much I'm excited to wear your beautiful design collection when I'm out there in Jerusalem I will think of you and I'll think of your broader mission Awesome. Amen to that too. Yeah. Best Thank you.